go. Listen. Bob Evans and Nowhere Without You, ABC South Coast and Brad Cullen with John Cecil. One of the greatest unknowns about autism is that uh, children can heal, according to Julie Matthews, who is an autism nutrition specialist. She's an educator, an author, and an advocate, and she's on the line. Julie Matthews, good morning to you. Good morning, Don. Thank you for joining us this morning. You're actually speaking, uh, and have been speaking in Western Australia about autism. Can you uh, explain to us the link between autism and diet? Absolutely. So, a lot of times when people think of autism, they think of physical, rather they think of certain uh, behaviors and certain ways the brain functions, but what we forget is how the body is actually connected to the brain and that the biochemistry going on in the body is affecting that. So, food and fiction can have a direct link to what's happening Mama, in the radio. So, can you give us examples of that? Absolutely. So a lot of them have digestive problems, immune and inflammatory problems, and very toxification issues. So when we look at digestion not working well, if a protein like gluten or dairy isn't broken down properly, it can actually be opiates. And we know from morphine and things, that can have a really significant impact on how the brain works. And how does that manifest itself, that even a person with autism? So it might be in that case, it might be spaciness or in a, um, it might be in some cases um, when we look at nutrient deficiencies, we can, there's the ways that the biochemistry is actually affecting the brain chemicals so we don't have enough uh, serotonin or the proper brain chemicals. So in various different ways it can directly affect what's happening in the brain. How do you measure then the, the difference between somebody with um, what it, what it, what it, what it, baseline uh, autism and then uh, the the added problems of of incorrect diet. So what where would the differences be? Well, a lot of times what we do is we look at what happens when we take, change diets and what a lot of parents report and what I see in my practice is we see a lot of improvements in language, we see improvements in maybe hyperactivity, um, sleeping improvements, all sorts of things. So, um, we, you know, each child is different, so they might manifest things differently, but what we can see is uh, where they start yeah. out, like you said, as a baseline, and then when we make certain changes to diet, you see often very dramatic improvements, so you can see very often that they are directly related to the dietary changes that are made. Are they dramatic as in uh, the next diet? Sometimes, sometimes I had um, one dad tell me that in three days on a gluten-free and dairy-free diet, his child had the first conversation he's ever had. Uh, I've had some in the course of a few weeks that they go from zero words to 200 words in a really flourishing in language. And so it, it may be the next day or maybe a few days or even a few weeks later, but it's pretty, pretty immediate. And and uh, uh, a, a general thing or is it in specific cases? Um, it's pretty universal. A lot of the studies that were done in the states show, and the parent reporting surveys and things, show anywhere from 70 to 85 percent of the children that implement a special diet see some level of improvement, sometimes uh, step by step, sometimes fairly dramatic. So it's a pretty large percentage. And is there a general uh, diet, a set of rules for the diet, or is it tailored to each individual person? Um, both. Uh, we see very frequently with the digestive um, inefficiencies, gluten and dairy are really big problems, artificial ingredients are really big problems, um, and certain other diets. So to some extent, yes, in each individual is unique and so we want to tailor it, but there's some pretty um, common, consistent dietary changes that make a pretty profound effect in most of them. Like what? Um, particularly, um, so it might be, like I said, be taking out wheat and, um, you know, breads and things like that. It might be taking out artificial colors, flavors, preservatives. Um, there's also other compounds. Um, there's a pretty famous diet here in Australia called the, the Fail Safe Diet. You know that one of the, the um, Alfred Alpha, Alpha Hospital that um, eliminates things called salicylates. And that can make a pretty profound effect on um, hyperactivity and aggressive behavior. So again, the test thing, you might choose different things. So where do you start then to uh, to track down what's causing an individual uh, distress? Yeah, well, um, we can look at symptoms and 
And then if I'm so done, like if you see a lot of digestive disturbance, I would most likely take out wheat and dairy and see what improvements you see. Um, but um, the other really big and very easy thing to start with is removing all of those artificial colors, flavors, and preservatives that are a lot in a lot of the junk foods and the king foods. Those are a couple like really areas I think of some of the biggest change. And then you can adjust it uh, as you go. Right, and how long do you, does it take to, to go through the adjustment process? So usually it's suggested to go maybe three to six months on a diet to see ultimately if it's, a, if it's really helpful and effective. But usually you're going to see changes even in the first few days, so that kind of gives you an idea if you want to keep going. So you, you kind of get, uh, I, I guess, get some rewards for your efforts in changing the diet. And, and uh, yeah, some enthusiasm to, to go on for the next six months. Exactly. You know, when you've been dealing with, say, aggressive behavior or hyperactivity and you see a dramatic improvement um, the next day or a few days later, you know, it gives you definitely um, the um, enthusiasm to see what else you can uh, do. Yeah. Now, you're actually speaking of this in Perth on the 21st, is that right? Yeah, on the 21st on Sunday at the in Midland at the Queen Elizabeth Medical Center, there's going to, we're going to be doing a talk there, and um, people can find more information if they're interested at um, both my website, if, if I can give that. Yep, sure. Um, that's nourishinghope.com, and, um, and then if you'd like, I, there's a local phone number of some moms at Autism West that can also help people get there, and that is 08. Six three eight nine one eight three three. And that's autism West. Six three eight nine one eight three three. Yes. Or if you missed that, give us a call at the station. We'll pass it on. Julie, thank you for joining us this morning and sharing that with us. It's uh, um, it must be great for, for mums and dads to to get that sort of hope and to have that kind of solution to. Um, to a problem or you know, the help with, it, with such a problem. Absolutely, and that's why I do this. That's why I uh, titled my work Nourishing Hope. And the one other great thing is one that you can connect with other moms and parents that have done some of these diet changes already and seen big improvements. So it will be great. I would encourage anybody that's new to listen to some of the parents and, and come share. Julie Matthews, thanks for joining us this morning. Nice to talk with you. Thanks, John. Enjoy slamming Western Australia while it's still here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, bye. Bye. ABC Radio, South Coast and Great Southern. It's 4 to 11.